Welcome! Let's take an initial look at fractions. We'll start with a number line and concentrate on the space between the whole numbers 0 and 1. We can represent 1 visually as a circle, which indicates a whole amount. If we divide the circle into two equal parts, we can also divide the distance between 0 and 1 on the number line into two equal parts. If we shade one side of the circle, then the mark we made on the number line would indicate one out of two parts have been covered. In other words, we've covered one half of the circle, and the mark on the number line is one half of the way between zero and one. One half is a fraction, and fractions consist of a numerator, or the top number, and a denominator, or the bottom number. Now what if we divided the circle again? this time into four equal parts. Let's also reflect that on the number line by dividing the distance between 0 and 1 into four equal parts. In this case, two out of the four parts are shaded, and we can represent that on our number line as two out of four, or the fraction two-fourths. One-half and two-fourths are equivalent. Now fractions can also be negative, so let's place negative 1 on our number line and split the distance between 0 and 1 in half. That mark indicates negative 1 half. So let's determine what the mark to the right of 0 represents as a fraction. It is one step out of four equal steps on the way from 0 to 1, or the fraction 1 quarter. What about the mark immediately to the left of 1? Well, it is 3 steps out of 4 steps on the way from 0 to 1, or the fraction 3 quarters. Now what if we divided our circle again, this time into 8 equal parts? Well, let's also divide our number line between 0 and 1 into 8 equal parts. So our mark representing one half on the number line is also equal to four steps out of eight steps on the way from zero to one, or the fraction four eighths. And on our circle, it's shown as four parts out of the eight parts that are shaded. So the fractions one half, two fourths, and four eighths are all equivalent. We call the fractions that occupy the spaces between the whole numbers negative 1 and 1 proper fractions. For proper fractions, the numerator or top number is less than the denominator or bottom number. For example, for these fractions, the top number is always less than the bottom number. Now, fractions can also occur at other points on the number line. For example, what would the fraction be halfway between the whole numbers 1 and 2? As before, we can represent the whole numbers as circles. So 1 for number 1, and we'll add another circle to show that we have 2 for the number 2. We've divided the space between 1 and 2 into two equal parts, so we'll also do that for the space between 0 and 1, and extend that to the circles to divide them in half. So starting at 0, we've gone three steps over out of the two parts we've divided each whole number into. And if we indicate it by way of shading, we've shaded 1, 2, 3 parts out of the two parts that we've divided each whole into. So the fraction 3 over 2 is a whole plus half a whole.
and we can indicate that as 1 and 1 half. The fractions 3 over 2 and 1 and a half are equivalent. We call the fraction 3 over 2 an improper fraction, and the fraction 1 and a half a mixed fraction. Mixed fractions are made up of a whole number and a fraction. Fractions greater than 1 or less than negative 1 are improper fractions, and also mixed fractions. For improper fractions, the numerator, or top number, is greater than the denominator, or bottom number. So 3 is greater than 2, so it's an improper fraction. And we can also have negative improper fractions. So let's say we divide the whole number spaces to the left of 0 into four equal parts. If we count all the way to the hash mark just before the negative 3, that would be 11 steps out of the four equal parts that we've gone to the left. So that fraction, or improper fraction, is negative 11 fourths. As a mixed fraction, we've gone over two whole steps plus 3 out of the 4 steps on the way from negative 2 to 3. So negative 11 fourths is also equal to negative 2 and 3 quarters. Let's show that visually. As before, we'll create some circles to represent the whole amounts. And this time we'll make red circles to indicate they're negative. And we're dividing those circles into 4 equal parts, just like we did the number line we would shade the first two circles completely to represent the negative 2. And then for the third circle, we'd shade 3 out of the 4 parts. So in summary, fractions include parts of a whole and occupy the spaces in between the whole numbers on a number line. And there you go. That's a brief introduction to fractions. Thanks for watching.